Harvard recently released a study that's very that's been very critical when it comes to the media and how they handled the primary election. Now, this comes from uh, Thomas Patterson, who is Harvard's Bradley Professor of Government and the Press, in conjunction with the Shorstein Center on Media, Public Policy, and Politics. They conducted an analysis of eight different cable networks and newspapers. Now, outlets, for example, like USA Today, Fox News, the LA Times, the Wall Street Journal, CBS, MS, or, uh, I'm sorry, NBC, including MSNBC, and the Washington Post. So they looked at all those, and what did they find? Well, they found a lot, uh, and especially a lot wrong. So let's start uh, with the Republican primary. Right. So now, first of all, I want to note that the Shorstein analysis learned that the Republican candidates got roughly twice as much media coverage as the Democratic candidates. Already off to a fantastic start. Here the media talks about the Republicans twice as much as the Democrats. That has the effect, of course, of setting the tone, setting the narrative of the entire primary election, and maybe even into the general election. So, great. Slanted towards the Republican Party. And also slanted towards a specific candidate in the Republican Party. Now, I wonder who that could be. Could it be uh, Jeb Bush? Could it be Jeb Bush? Uh, well, no, because... They're kicking me out the door. They're kicking me out the door. Not Jeb Bush. Uh, what about Marco Ruby? Little Marco, little Marco. What about little Marco? No, of course not. <laughs> Ted Cruz. Well, he did get some coverage, but mainly because he was a crazy son of a bitch. No, no, no. Who it was is Donald Trump. The study found that media companies devoted an unprecedented amount of coverage to Trump from the start of his campaign, effectively shutting out a dozen of his competitors. Like Jim Gilmore. Anybody know who Jim Gilmore was? The guy was on a milk carton for the most of the primary. He never made it onto a debate, but he was still there for quite a long time. <laughs> it's crazy, but he shut he shut out Jim Gilmore. Now, you might be thinking, okay, sure, Donald Trump was covered a lot more, but it must have all been terrible, right? It must have all been negative. I mean, Trump's a buffoon. He's a racist. He's a demagogue. It's got to be negative, right? It's got to be. Wrong. The majority of the coverage for Trump during the time period was either positive or neutral. Let me, take a, uh, let me, let me show you this chart here, show you what I mean. That is awful. Now, that has changed as of lately. The media has now given Trump a lot of shit. But it didn't do that during the primary when it actually counted. It would have actually fucking mattered. See, the study focused on what they called the invisible primary. The seven to eight months leading up to the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary. Patterson called the invisible, uh, invisible primary a critical period for candidates as the media is reporting on each candidate can influence their standing in polls, which influences endorsements, all of which influence how candidates perform in the first contests. Which, by the way, is one of the arguments made for by, uh, made by uh, Bernie Sanders as to why he didn't run as an independent. Independents, they rarely get media coverage. Now, that's even that's starting to change. Gary Johnson is getting his own town hall. So the, even that is starting to change. But it could be the fact that Republicans, or that uh, the general electorate, sorry, 70% of voters, of Americans, have an unfavorable view of Donald Trump. They're looking for outsiders. 55% of them don't want Hillary Clinton. They don't like Hillary Clinton. So they're looking for some sort of alternative. And that has allowed Jerry, Gary Johnson to get bumped up in the polls, the libertarian candidate. So, they're looking for alternatives, man. They're looking for alternatives. Now, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, as I said, independents, for the most part, traditionally do not get that media coverage, especially earlier on in the race. So, it wouldn't have meant anything if Bernie Sanders had ran as an independent. He would not have been nearly as successful as he had been. So, anyway. 
Uh, they continue, of all the indicators of success in the invisible primary, media exposure is arguably the most important. Media exposure is essential if a candidate is to rise in the polls. Absent a high polling standing or upward momentum, it's difficult for a candidate to raise money, win endorsements, or even secure a spot in the pre-primary debates. In the early going, nothing is closer to pure gold than favorable free media exposure. It can boost the candidate's poll standing and access to money and endorsements. And above all, it bestows credibility. Now that's very important. Trump, through the media, became credible. And also, unfortunately, it also normalized the kind of racist rhetoric that you hear from Trump, which is not a good thing. Now, the Shorstein Center concluded that Donald Trump's rise from a fringe candidate with no fundraising potential and low poll numbers to the front runner before the Iowa caucus was mostly due to the tremendous volume of media coverage he attracted, dubbing him the first bona fide media created presidential nominee. And why is that? It's because the media loves clickbait. And Donald Trump is the clickbait king. People already knew who he was. He had a fucking reality show. So they knew. Oh, Donald Trump said horrible things about Muslims and Mexicans. I've got to click on that. I've got to click on that story. He said these horrible things and got all sorts of internet traffic. It's all about the clicks. It's all about getting the audience and it's all about the money. And look, Donald Trump, he's a showman. He knows how to play the crowd. And more importantly, he knows how to play this media game. And he does it very, very well. In fact, in the period between January 1st and December 31st of last year, the Shorstein Center studied coverage of leading Republican presidential candidates from Fox, CBS, NBC, The New York Times, the LA Times, USA Today, The Wall Street Journal, and The Washington Post. And they say that assuming the amount of time spent covering a candidate is equivalent to the dollar amount a candidate would spend buying ads for those media outlets, the study found that Trump got roughly $55 million in free media coverage. I've got another chart for you that shows that. Take a look. Isn't that amazing? They're not even close. Now, of course, that doesn't even count earned media, which is basically what we're doing here. News and commentary about his campaign on television, right? In newspapers, in magazines, and on social media. Now, on that kind, he had $2 billion worth of earned media. There is no doubt that Donald Trump is the king of earned media. And that, of course, explains why Trump did so well. His messages of hate and intolerance were broadcast for everyone to hear. And for him, it emboldened the racist underbelly of, of America to come out of the shadows and support him. And support him they have. This is a guy that has David Duke on his side. He can disavow David Duke all he wants. There's a reason David Duke keeps knocking. Okay? And that's the rhetoric. That's the stuff he stands for. So, that's the Republicans. This also looked at Democrats. On the Democratic side, the Harvard study found that not only did the media cover the Republican invisible primary twice as much as the Democrats, as I had mentioned, but that Hillary Clinton, her campaign received three times more media coverage in 2015. Jesus Christ, man. Three times. Three times more. Five Republican contenders, not only, uh, not only the, the, the Clinton get more, but five Republican contenders, uh, which is Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, Jeb Bush, Ben Carson, and Marco Rubio, all got more media coverage than Bernie Sanders back in 2015. And you remember during the summer, that's when he really started to break out at the end of summer. That's when he went from, uh, you know, 3% in the polls to being competitive with Hillary Clinton. Man. Patterson remarked that the lack of media attention for Bernie Sanders' campaign undoubtedly left permanent damage on his ability to be competitive 
in the Democratic primaries and caucuses, as the media's earliest coverage had deemed the Vermont senator a likely loser. Now, you might be saying, yeah, but that was true. See, he lost. He lost. So he was a loser. No, that's because the media narrative was already there before the voting even started. People put a lot of stock in what mainstream corporate media says. Now, I'm trying to change that. We're trying to change that. People on the internet, people on YouTube, by actually giving you the actual facts and not bullshit. But right now, a lot of people tend to put stock in corporate media. And all from, and, 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 and from day one, all you could hear on corporate media, when you turn on an MSNBC, Hillary Clinton, she's inevitable. She's going to win. Sanders is a socialist. He's a loser. He's not going to win. He's got pie in the sky ideas that will never, ever work. So don't waste your time. Don't waste your time with the Sanders guy. No, no, no. Uh, it's Hillary versus Trump. It's going to be Hillary versus Trump, or it's going to be Hillary versus Jeb Bush back at that point. And look at the crazy thing uh, Donald Trump said. That's all you had in the media. And not only that, but superdelegates added to that narrative by being for Hillary Clinton right out of the gate. That gave her the appearance of a huge lead before voting even started. Oh, wow. The, the media says she's inevitable, and she already has... 400 of these super delegates, whatever the hell they are, well, obviously she's going to win. And the Sanders guy, oh, I like the Sanders guy, but he's never going to win. And his, his ideas, people say that his ideas, well, they're never going to work and that he's a socialist. Well, I can't vote for that. I, I'm, I'm going to vote for the winner. People like to vote for a winner. People don't like to vote for losers. People don't like to support losers, right? Generally, that's what happened. That media narrative hobbled Sanders from the get-go. Not only that, but also you had name recognition early on. That's also super important. Super important. If you don't know a candidate, you're not going to vote for that candidate. You're not going to choose him. People will usually choose a name that they know. Oh, I know Hillary Clinton. Who's this Bernie Sanders guy? I don't know. And if you don't believe me, even as late as to August of 2015, two in five registered Democrats said they had never heard of Bernie Sanders or had heard so little about him, thanks to the media, that they didn't even have an opinion. And the thing is, the more they knew about him, the more liked he became. The more people actually were like, oh, I like this Sanders guy. But they didn't really get a chance when it came to, uh, you know, media, when it came to corporate media. Now, the other problem is that most of the media coverage of the Democratic and Republican primary wasn't about issues. It was only about the so-called horse race. I got another chart for you here. Now, uh, you can see the, the, the percentage of coverage devoted to the issues versus the percentage of issue coverage negative in tone. Look at that. Clinton, 28% positive or uh, devoted to just issues. 84% of negative coverage versus Sanders at 7% devoted to issues and 17% of issue uh, coverage that was negative. Look at that, man. Let's be fair. You could, it's obvious to see that Hillary Clinton got a lot more media coverage, but most of it was negative, 84% of the time. Jesus, man, that's way worse than Trump. Look, I'm not a Hillary Clinton fan, but Trump's been saying some pretty horrible shit about things. And his policies, his issues, are also quite horrible. But he got less negative coverage than Hillary Clinton. Then you look at Sanders. The media coverage he got during his crucial time period, 17% of it was negative, And only 7% was about actual issues. Bernie Sanders ran a issue-oriented campaign. But the media, of course, didn't give a fuck about the issues. They don't care. They, they don't want to talk about the issues. In all of these candidates and their coverage, it was overwhelmingly negative for all of them, and not at all about actual issues. And that's where I feel the fear, uh, that's where I feel the media fails the most. How are people ever going to be informed about the issues when no one talks about the issues? And that's the problem with the media, and that's the saddest thing that I get from this study.